is a free course designed to give you the space and time to ask the big and often challenging questions about life, faith and meaning from the comfort of your own home. No filters, just honest discussion. Alpha Online is made up of a film series which are designed to create conversations around topics such as how can I pray? Who is Jesus? What is the meaning of life? Why is there suffering in this world? 
Each week, you will have an opportunity to watch a short video and then chat about it with a small group of people who, like you, are also grappling with life's big questions. And no question is off limits. To attend an Alpha Online, all you have to do is sign up and then join a weekly online call, all from the comfort of your home. Everything else is taken care of by your hosts. So feel free to pour yourself a drink, get comfy, get your laptop ready, and you are good to go. What have you got to lose? Try Alpha online. Good morning and welcome to our service of worship here online with St Andrew's Lecky Parish Church. For anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Pamela Kennedy and I'm a member of the congregation here as well as a candidate in training for ministry with the Church of Scotland. I'll be leading us this morning in Malcolm's absence as he takes a well-earned break So it's probably very fitting for us to begin with these words. Happy New Year! Perhaps this year the word happy grates a little bit for some people given the sort of year we've just had and given apprehensions about the coming year. So I wanted to start by sharing with you one of my favourite Bible verses and it's so important to me that I have it in a frame. It comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. And it says this, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I love that because there's something really important, I think, about filling up on these things. 
It doesn't mean ignoring or failing to acknowledge that there is darkness and struggle. But it does mean remembering the hope that we have. Hope that shines brighter than any dark. So let's begin our time together this new year in adoration, focused on the hope that we have in Jesus. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we come before you this morning in worship because that is the only attitude fitting of all that you are. Creator and sustainer of all, source and light, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we praise you. And we come this morning longing to know you more, to draw closer, to be transformed, to become more like Jesus. We confess that in the noise of our Christmas and New Year celebrations, in the noise of the news headlines, in the noise of our own words and actions, we don't always honour you and give to you our devoted worship. We confess too that in our words and actions, we can sometimes demonstrate a wrong worship of other things and we receive your forgiveness in Jesus Christ. We praise you, the God who would love us with such self-sacrificial, merciful love as we see in Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray that your name would be honoured this morning in our worship and in our hearts. And we continue to pray now in the words the Lord Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we do come this morning in adoration as we join together to sing.
Good morning to you if you are one of the younger people worshipping with us today especially. Maybe I should say good evening because I've actually waited to record this at night time in the hopes that we'd be able to see some stars. Guess what? It's really, really cloudy and there are no stars visible at all. This is the best that I can do for you, I'm afraid. I wanted to talk to you about stars because I think they're just the most incredible thing. I wonder if you've ever stood outside and looked up and appreciated quite how enormous and incredible God's creation really is. What's even more amazing is that the Bible says that God knows exactly how many of these there are up there. That is not something that we would be able to manage to count the number of stars. It just shows how awesome our God really is. Well, I wonder whether you can think of a Bible story that is to do with a star. A Bible story about a special group of travellers. We often see three of them. I'm going to show you my friend here because I think he might help you to work out the story I'm talking about. These travellers, they followed a star all the way to Bethlehem to visit a child who had been born as king. When they got there, even though Jesus wasn't in a fancy house or a palace, and even though he was just a very small boy, they worshipped him. Now the Bible says something just brilliant about Jesus, that Jesus is the true light that gives light to everything much better than a star. But it also says that when Jesus came, not everyone recognised that. These travellers, they're often called wise men because they were wise enough to see that the real light didn't come from the star that they followed, but had actually been born here on earth. No wonder they worshipped. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to be our light. Thank you that you still call us to follow you. Help us to do that today and every day. Amen. We're going to sing now a well-known song about those travellers and think about how the star they really came to see, the light of Jesus, still shines to lead us now. So far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to. Thy perfect light Born a king on Bethlehem's plain Gold I bring to crown him again King forever ceasing Never over a soul to reign Oh, star of wonder, 
star of night, star with a royal beauty bright, west we're leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Frankincense to offer have I Incense owns a deity nigh Prayer and praising all men raising Worship in God most high Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright West we're leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume Breeze of life, of gathering gloom Sorrow sighing, bleeding, dying Sealed in the stone cold tomb Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright West we're leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Glorious now, behold him rise King and God in sacrifice Alleluia, alleluia Bird to and replies Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright West we're leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light So this is the point in the service when our children head off to their own group. Those who are older young people, you don't have any groups running today, but there are things for you to engage with that have been posted. And of course, you'd be really welcome to remain with us for the rest of our worship service together. These are times where it can be harder to remain in contact. So there's some information here that might be of use to you. If you would like at any stage to contact Heather in the office, then she is available. The details are on screen with the phone number. And of course, there is the website and the Facebook page where there will be regular updates for you to check. This would also be the point in the service where we would think about uptake of an offering. If you want to find out more about giving, Again, the details are on screen. So we're going to continue with our worship in a moment where Carrie Duthie will bring our prayers of intercession, followed by Matthew Henderson, who will bring our reading. But before that, Julie and Andrew Knox have something that they would like to share with us. Good morning and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's a time for a new beginning, time for a new start. It's also a time that we ponder and reflect upon the year gone by, 2020. For most of us, it has been a tough year. It's a year that we will never forget. And perhaps some of you have been asking yourself questions. Questions like, what is life all about? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Is there a God? And if there is, where is he in all of this? 
Well, let me reassure you, you are not alone. We've just celebrated Christmas, the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. We've had a, a season of Advent, Emmanuel, God with us. A season that brings love, joy, hope and peace. And as we go forward into 2021, all of us will be needing to hold on to hope. As Julie said, you may have been asking yourself lots of questions. Well, we would love for you to join us online to do an Alpha course, where together we can explore and discuss some of your questions in relation to faith. What if I'm not a Christian? Ideal. The Alpha course is designed specifically for people who are not Christians, people who have questions, who can ask any question in a non-threatening, friendly, safe environment. Well, what if I'm already a Christian? Again, it's for you because the Alpha course works best when there is a mixture of Christian and non-Christian. But what if I've already done Alpha? Well, we have a lady who's signed up and she's already done four Alphas. And she said to us, you know, you're always learning something new. And that's so true. And what if I want to invite someone along to Alpha? Well, we would encourage you to pray for that person. Pray for the right opportunity. That God would give you the right words and go and ask that person. And what if I'm between the ages of 18 and 24? That's a really good question. Well, our new youth worker, Sarah Brown, is facilitating a course specifically for that age group, which is fantastic news. Yes, that is so exciting. So, Andrew, when does it start? Well, it starts on Monday the 18th of January. We will meet online on the Zoom platform for... Uh, a friendly chat, we'll watch a, a short film and then a little bit more discussion afterwards and then we'll start the course properly the week after. And where can I find more information? Well, all the information is on the church website. There'll be information on the church Facebook page. You can also contact Heather at the office. Hmm. And Andrew, an advantage of being online is? Well, the advantage of being online is you can turn up in your jammies. Wow, that is exciting <laughs> and comfy. We hope to see you very soon and we really look forward to you. Please get in touch with us if you want more information. Okay, God bless. God bless. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the wise men gave you gold. They knew you were a king. The wise men gave you incense. They knew you were God. The wise men gave you myrrh, they knew you would die. They followed the light of a star to find you in Bethlehem. Help us to follow your light so that we can live as children of God in peace and knowing your love. We've heard the Christmas story about how you, Father, came to live among us. As we try to understand what this means in our lives, we pray that you will guide us in our requests for others, in our prayers of intercession. Fill our expectant hearts as we stand at the beginning of a new year. We've been here so many times and yet we've never been here before. We cannot be gathered together in our church, but it is a time when we need each other so much. We worship together from where we are. We listen to your word and bring to you the concerns of our hearts, knowing that you are our God who hears our prayers. We pray for all those watching today, each one of us made up differently and facing the normal ups and downs of family life in different ways. We remember that Jesus was born, nurtured and grew up in a family which would have known all the emotions that we know in ours. We pray that each family knows the love revealed to us in Jesus. We pray for the sick, 
both at home and in hospital or hospice. We think of the elderly, the housebound and those in care homes and we pray for all who care to their needs, both professionally and in the family. Especially we pray for those whose hearts overflow with grief, unanswered questions and such a sense of loss. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones, whether recently or some time ago, grant them space to express their tears. Hold them close through the coming days, weeks and months. We bring before you those known only to ourselves and name them in our hearts as we share a moment of silence together. We pray for those with whom we share our lives, for families and neighbours. We pray for protection and ask that you stop the spread of this virus. We are so blessed to have such superb medical care in our country, particularly at this time, and pray for all who serve, particularly those who serve long, long hours with limited equipment. We thank you for them. Pray that you give them strength. Bless our nurses, our doctors, our chaplains, and those who work in our laboratories. For those who drive our ambulances and emergency vehicles, and for all the other key workers. We pray for those in the media that they would give us the information we need without creating needless fear or panic. Lord, we pray that you would protect this nation and the whole world from the coronavirus, which is still spreading. You are in control of all things and we place ourselves into your hands. We bring before you the many leaders of the world and those in high positions who are seeking to abide by the truth of your law. May they be tools used by you to maintain justice and righteousness in their positions. Unite our nation and guide these leaders with your wisdom and help us to build a future in which all may prosper and share. Protect and bring our nation back to you. We pray for our church leaders and ask that you would help and lead them to walk closely with you, with patience, showing love for those around them. We pray and give thanks for our Minister Malcolm, that he has your energy to keep serving faithfully. Help him, Hannah, Samuel and Millie to find periods of rest and refreshment at this time. We give thanks for Pamela and her call to ministry. Father, give her wisdom and clarity in the future and be with her at all times and especially now as she leads us in worship. Thank you for your daily presence in our lives, that we can be assured your heart is towards us, your eyes are over us and your ears are open to the prayers of your people. For we ask these things in your mighty name. Amen. I visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all Jerusalem's peoples, chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem in Judea. They replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report him to me so that I can, may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
when they opened their treasure and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
before we come to open up God's word to us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you speak through your word. We thank you that you are continually speaking to us and we pray that you would come now by your Holy Spirit, that you would enable us to hear from you what you have for each one of us, that you would be at work within us and amongst us. In Jesus' name, amen. I wonder if you have seen the slightly irreverent cartoon depiction of someone opening their front door to find somebody else standing on their doorstep who promptly asks them if they have found Jesus. And then what you see is in the wider room, you see a set of curtains with a pair of feet sticking out underneath. Well, it is a slightly irreverent cartoon, but I think there's something oddly familiar about this idea that Jesus is present with us and somehow we are blind to him. And maybe that's part of the reason why the joke is just a little bit funnier. Today's Epiphany Sunday, a day when traditionally the church will take time to reflect upon the full revelation of God in Jesus Christ, the intersection of the divine and the human, the presence of Emmanuel, God with us. And here in our reading today, we have travellers from the east led here in search of a king, the king of the Jews. These men come seeking revelation. Where is he? They ask. Where can we find him? And they're clear about the purposes of their visit. They have come to worship him. There are lots of details that we can't be sure of when it comes to these wise men. We don't know how many there are, for example. Yes, they bring three gifts, but all we know from the Gospel of Matthew is that they are plural. We don't know exactly where they come from in the East either, whatever the carol may say. There are lots of theories and the most compelling one, I think, is that they come from Babylon. The Babylonians, remember, had taken the Israelites into exile, not exactly their best friends. During the time of Daniel in the Old Testament, we read of Magi exactly the same word that's used here in the Gospel of Matthew. They were astrologers, star gazers, and probably pagan priests who first came into contact with Judaism at this time when they encountered the Israelites. The argument goes then that because of the descendancy from these magi, these magi in Matthew knew something of Jewish prophecy and Jewish culture despite it not being part of their own tradition. So it is certainly possible that they came from Babylon. I like that theory. It's certainly possible too that we might consider them to be wise in terms of human wisdom. They're men who studied, who considered, who took other views into account. And what's really striking about them is that they were men of action. They packed up and left for a distant land that they had only read about and they were bold in their declaration of purpose. Think about it for a moment. They arrived at the royal residence in Jerusalem, the capital city where you might expect the royal residence to be, and asked the man who had been given the title of king by the Romans where they might find the one born king of the Jews. Brave. 
Do these men bow before Herod as the king? And how do they intend to respond to the baby born king of the Jews? What a contrast. Do you see it? The real wisdom of these men has a source that is not their own. Something within them knows that the one that they have come for is no ordinary king. The fulfilment of prophecy. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. In verse 1 to 3 of Isaiah 60, we read, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. These magi, these wise men are led and they willingly follow. They rejoice when they see the star but they open their gifts and fall down in worship when they see the child. Stargazers they may be but their eyes were not so dazzled that they failed to recognise the true light, the Lord Jesus, nearly two years old in an unlikely, humble house in Bethlehem. But perhaps the most incredible part of this story and the part that Matthew intends for us to notice is that these magi were pagan Gentiles. These magi were not Israelites. They were not Jewish. They were not considered God's chosen people. Far from it. And if they were indeed priests, pagan priests, then they not only worshipped other gods, but their job was to lead other people to do so as well. And yet, see the mercy and grace of God at work. They are compelled to come. The Magi's visit illuminates God's missional purposes in the world. In Isaiah 49 verse 6, we read the Lord say, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Anything else we read is too small a thing. God is not content with salvation only for this Israel. The star that seemed to move in guiding the Magi from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. God at work in the world. Their compulsion to come. All revealing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Come for all who would follow him. Come for sinners. For those distant from God. These men lay down their worldly wealth before him. Gold for a king, frankincense used by priests and myrrh prophetically anticipating his death. Prophet, priest and king. Jesus' kingly identity all wrapped up in gift form. Did they know? The extent of their intuitive understanding is somehow deeper than even they seem to grasp. And 
we might contrast this with the behaviour of the priests and the teachers here in verse 4, the same Sadducees and Pharisees that we read of later constantly in conflict with Jesus. Jerusalem was only five or six miles away from Bethlehem. So if they knew that that was where the Messiah was going to be born. And if they had a sense that this might happen now, then why didn't they go too? Those people with all the studied head knowledge of Jewish history and of scripture, those people with the experience of Jewish ritual, had their pull to worship somehow got lost in all their study and their wisdom. And the people in verse three, we read that they were disturbed along with Herod. Why would that be if Herod was effectively a tyrant? Was it because this was something new that might disturb their status quo? Here was risk, something that would move them from their comfort zone. Potential change and challenge to everything that they already knew. And then there's Herod himself. He and the Magi use the same word to describe their intentions before Jesus, worship. Yet Herod's intention is far from the same. He is threatened. He is proud. He is afraid. But he dons the mask of worship. So what then are we to make of all of this? How might this story guide us. Well, having taken a bit of an overview of the story, I think we would do well to focus in on one part. And that is the point at which these travellers finally arrive. Nations who have come to his light. Remember that from Isaiah 60. These were among the first people to genuinely worship Jesus Christ. The first to grasp enough of the revelation of God with us were pagan, idol-worshipping Gentiles. This, I think, raises huge questions for us. What does it do to our understanding of mission? and our understanding of outreach. In John 1, we read that his own people did not recognise him. So here is the mystery of revelation. God fully revealed to us in Jesus Christ, present with us and yet somehow not seen aright by all. And even for those of us who confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, Emmanuel, how often do we fail to come to him as these men do? At sight, falling before him, cracking open their gifts, all that they have, their most prized things, vulnerable, humble, full of awe. So what is it that masks our ability then to see him for who he is? Do we live in fear of where that humble, vulnerable, cracked, open devotion might lead us? Are we so caught up in the way things are that we don't feel we can adjust our vision? And how is he calling each of us to follow, 
to bring our gifts, the fullness of our worship, what might we lay at his feet? In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul writes, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. The tradition at this time of year is to reflect upon and to give thanks for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the light coming into the world, marking the beginning of God's plan realised, a plan that would ultimately make salvation to the ends of the earth possible in Christ's death and resurrection. The beginning of an unfolding of God's purposes in Christ. And I think that this unfolding helps us to understand why we do not yet fully see. Like even his closest disciples, we might see and not see simultaneously. We might, like Peter, confess that he is the Messiah and moments later act as one blind to who Jesus is. We might, like Peter, make commitment to remain with him when things get tough and then find that we have let him down as we hear the cock crow three times. We might, like Peter, walking on water towards his Lord, take our eyes off Jesus for a moment because we are so fearful of these waves that are crashing around us. But praise God that we are compelled to come. Sin and weakness and all to the light of our Lord Jesus. Praise God that it is through no work of our own that he leads us and guides us. Praise God that he has saved and saves and promises to go on saving in Christ until the Lord Jesus comes again when his purposes are fully realised and every knee shall bow like the knees of the Magi. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Today and every day, we celebrate the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, the light that has come into the world, the light that has come for all nations, the light that promises to remain with us even through the unfolding of his purposes until he comes again. The light that we ourselves carry and that today still draws needy travellers to worship him. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your glorious light revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you that you call us, even us, to follow. For those of us who today see ourselves in the Magi, distant travellers whose worship has been in the wrong places. For those of us who see ourselves in the people of Jerusalem, uncomfortable at the prospect of change. For those of us who see ourselves in the scribes and teachers, so caught up in what we believe and why that we've forgotten the joy of worship. And for those of us who even today feel a bit like we are wearing a mask. We come to you now 
in the same posture as the Magi, in joy, laying all at your feet, Lord Jesus. Together we worship you. We wait on you. Go before us, we pray. Illuminate our path that we might ourselves bring your light to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our final worship song is very fitting for the beginning of a new year as we join our voices together and sing. As we go from here into this week and into this new year, may the light of the gospel of Christ shine in our hearts, transform our lives and brighten the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen.